365 is on the road here in Las Vegas. We are at AWS reInvent 2024. Dan, the conversation has been unsurprisingly about AI, different ways to slice it, just different ways to operationalize it, just getting ready for this gigantic enterprise swell of AI <laughs> that I think both our firms have estimated is a little, a little bit off. Yeah, well, I think a lot of people are starting to get the fatigue of hype. And right. what they're starting to look for is, is pragmatism. Right. They want to understand where does this technology really help drive the enterprise? You know, we hear these astounding numbers, 20 trillion of economic opportunity, 25 trillion. I've heard, you know, some gigantic numbers. You're hearing half a trillion dollars of spend just on the chips right. in the next handful of years. But in the end, right, a lot of this starts to be about how we experience things. It is. and. Um, Enterprises are trying to get, you know, their data managed, data estate uh, in line. Questions about security, questions about governance, and then doing AI at scale or any scale, you have to be able to operationalize it. IT ops we cannot forget because that basically keeps everything moving. And if you don't put that into your strategy with AI, you're going to not be able to do this. And I can't imagine a better person to talk about this. Nandini, welcome to the 6.5. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to this chat. Yeah, let's talk about IT ops at scale. Um, of course, we're, 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 it's been a really exciting week, Nandini. Um, it's a fire hose, and everybody kind of <laughs> knows that. That is the AWS, so much engineering prowess, so much, you know, so much uh, pedigree in this particular space. But yeah, as we see all this data move to the cloud, we see all these workloads, we've got to keep it up and running. And I know you gave a talk. Uh, you talked about, by the way, I think you had a three challenges, and, and, and I always love this, like what keeps you up at night? Yeah. CIOs, CTOs, CISOs. Operators. These, they, they are awake at night trying to figure out how do they make this all these cool features that we like to talk about work. So kind of give a little bit of that background of those, what's keeping them awake, and, yeah. and how's that changing in this era? That's a great question. So when you think about the complexity these days, you started off with staggering numbers, just in terms of compute, the spend that's coming with Gen AI, et cetera. So if you think about the trajectory of where we started and where we are, you know, we had simple days where you had one box, maybe one for load balancing, yeah. redundancy, like, you ran a, a web server on it and you were off to the races. Then we got to EC2 as compute. Then we went to EKS, ECS and now serverless with ephemeral little workloads that spin right. up, disappear, you have no idea where things are running. But it lets you scale. Mm -hmm. It lets you do so much more than you could initially. So I always ask our customers, what keeps you up at night? And it, it's, it's a trifecta, if you will. Number one, they want their operations to scale as their business scales without Makes having sense. to do anything. Right. Like, it just needs to work out of the box. Second. They want to be able to have insights into the data and all the telemetry that's being emitted, whether it's on-prem, on their own, whether it's on EC2 instances, or in some cases, multi-cloud. No matter where it resides, you want to be able to gather insights without doing any heavy lifting on ETL. Right, understand. Maintaining pipelines, doing all of those complicated things. Third, everybody wants automation. Can you just automate it? Give me built-in controls, fully managed. Those are sort of the three things that we try to address, and that's what most of our services are do for them, yeah. the undifferentiated heavy lifting, so our customers can just focus on their business and their end customers. No, it makes sense. I mean, listen, AWS was all about simplicity, uh, focused initially, actually still focused on developers and, and builders, and to, you know, letting a lot of the driving you know, to somebody else that, that they just didn't want to do because it didn't add business value. So that makes total sense. So I want to drill down a little bit into um, kind of the history and what you've learned over the past 17 years uh, that have given input into the products that you've chosen and the services that, that you've chosen uh, to deliver uh, at scale operations. It's exactly the 17 years of experience. And remember, we are the first cloud. So we've had 17 years oh, yeah. to build things for ourselves. Right. That's how it started. AWS was born because Amazon was scaling. And we needed all the challenges that I outlined came from learning of 17 years of building it for ourselves. In fact, 
systems manager, which is one of our services, was built so we could maintain our own instances right. and keep Amazon retail running. That's how it started out. Right. And now we externalize it. And that's typically what we do. In fact, if you take uh, CloudWatch, our flagship observability product service, um, we use it heavily internally. In fact, you can find developers both at, across Amazon and AWS pouring over dashboards, troubleshooting, to make sure that we are ready and always available for our end customers who rely on us. So it is that 17 years of experience that right. has helped us do it. And in fact, we ourselves use our tooling in a similar fashion internally. And the second thing I would say is, I have never found a company where we listen to our customers so closely. 90% of our roadmap is driven from customer requests. That's what we do. We have these operating plans that we build. They are entirely based off of the customer requests. I think it's those two things, our own experience and what customers want. So you heard us in the preamble talking about AI and the, and the acceleration, and you sort of alluded to it because you were giving a little bit of the histrionics of going from you know, web server to container to serverless. And, AI is kind of done, doing the same thing. You've gone. We've had this era of, of sort of data data management, and then we had this machine learning era, and now we yeah. have the AI era. And cloud operations has to follow this. You know, um, you know, how are you kind of integrating cloud operations into? I don't know the last two days of announcements, which are almost all built on a combination of managed AI services and self-built AI services that enterprises are really just beginning to adopt. Yeah. And I think Swami said it in his keynote today, and it's true, we've always had it. If you think about anomaly detection, we've always had the journey of AI, ML, and now Gen AI, where it's the ability to reason. Um, so first of all, Amazon Q developer, our flagship product, think of it as um, the one and only service that fully understands AWS. That is powerful. You don't have to go to run books. You don't need to call support. Like mm -hmm. you can ask it any question about AWS and it gives you an answer. So that's in and itself, it's already powerful. But on the journey of Gen AI, last year we released uh, natural language querying, also powered by Gen AI behind the covers, because every tool has its own query language. SQL this, PPL that, and so on and so right. forth. So we have that integrated in Config, CloudTrail. CloudWatch, OpenSearch, all of them now support natural language. And we've received tremendous feedback. Like it saves a lot of time for developers instead of typing queries. This year, Matt Garman announced in his keynote, ability to do operational investigations with QDeveloper. So what it does, you ask QDeveloper a question, it brings you to the CloudWatch console and you can start troubleshooting. We have 17 years of experience on our own services. So we built a knowledge graph based on those learnings of so many years of what customer behavior patterns, how do they use our services. And so it's able to let you know, once you turn the investigation right. on, it'll traverse and tell you what the likely cause is. And the typical causes for things going wrong, deployment, configuration changes, or in some cases, load balancers, auto scaling, those sort of yeah. problems. So it can pinpoint, it builds the topology for you, pinpoints where the problem is, and if you accept it, you can even remediate it in place. Now Matt also alluded to the fact that um, currently there, is, there are hallucinations and it's not 100% yet, but we're working hard with automated reasoning to make sure that it is solid and it can correct itself as it builds up the confidence. So that capability is available today for everyone to use in preview. And in fact, like I said earlier, we always eat, I like to say we sip our own champagne, but basically we use it internally. And in fact, Amazon Kindle support team right. has used Q investigations and they have saved 65 to 80% in tr uh, troubleshooting time. That is phenomenal. Think about the possibilities mm -hmm. when people start using this at scale. And I truly believe, um, just like 
Today, we don't talk about an anomaly detection as a thing. Right. Gen AI will just be part of everything we do. Yeah, so a couple of themes I'm picking up so far here is uh, first off, customer zero, right? Uh, Amazon, but also when it comes to cloud operations, your customer zero for all this cute, by the way, when uh, Matt got up on stage and put and showed all the operational stuff he could do with Q. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, and and pretty um, amazing. But and there's also the the at scale part. But I, I do have to ask you, uh, in your talk, this word uh, phraseology came up that I thought was pretty cool. Uh, Opsitron. I hope <laughs> I'm saying it correctly. You are saying it right. What what is Opsitron? Yeah. So. I mean, it's a pun on the fact that we run cloud operations, so ops and cloud ops, and we came up with, I didn't. What's the honest. Tron? Is it? It, it? It's, so we made, it's a made up thing. It's like a ourselves. verb, it's a verb. It's a verb, yeah. but now uh, it's going to be for us anyway, <laughs> but the, the idea is yeah. we build individual services. Like I talked about systems manager, which can do node management, CloudWatch does observability. Individually, these yeah. things are very powerful whether some metrics, logs. So what we came up with is each of our individual services are powerful in them, themselves. I think it's a quote from uh, fourth century BC from Aristotle. The sum is greater than its parts. Yeah. But I was like, I don't want to use that analogy. So they came up with this fun new contemporary way of saying individual bots. So the whole theme for the talk was we have a metrics bot and a logs bot and so on and so yeah. forth. But when they come together, they become even more powerful and help you troubleshoot much faster. Yeah, it's like the Wonder that Twins, is, Unite. It, I, I've been here, I watch the cartoons. But it's a theme for us because, just like I said, we do the undifferentiated heavy lifting. This is another thing we want to do. We don't want you, the customer shouldn't right. have to stitch all this information together. We want to do it for them. So we thought it'd be fun and it seems to resonate so we got the theme That's of just fun. Tell us a little bit more about that, though, the kind of explore-related button. The, the demo looks like it's basically stitching services together and, and making uh, the observability or the observable nature of Much it all. easier. Okay. So Gen AI is still early. And so we've also built a contextual graph within CloudWatch, yeah. which pulls up. That's the one you're alluding to. So you don't have to type anything. Just click, point and click, and it guides you through the topology. It points to where the issue is, and it takes you all the way from metrics to logs, which is usually the hard part of doing troubleshooting. Like it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Right. Multiple times it's look, looking for a particular needle in a particular haystack, <laughs> or how many needles in a haystack. You know, I can expand on those analogies, but that is the part that's so hard for folks to do. So picture, you have the contextual thing guiding you through the telemetry, and you have this investigation assistant. It being, if this answer that you're deriving as humans, which is what we do today, aligns with what you're seeing with Gen AI, it improves the confidence and it improves the learning capability of the service, the operational assistant. I think that combination is gonna be amazing. Yeah, so um, another scenario was troubleshooting. And I think it was this, you know, now that we're talking about mashups between CloudWatch and APM, can you talk us through a little bit about that, the need, the value, the benefit? Yeah. So while we live in infrastructure land all the time, and that's our world. Infrastructure is cool. It, I think it's very cool, <laughs> but it's not for everyone. <laughs> uh, but our customers want to focus on their business, yeah. their application. They're not. They they need all the infrastructure. They need the nodes. They need the logs. They need the telemetry. But what they re really care about is. Is there any latency for my end customer? Right. Is, you know, are there packet losses? Did my l latest deployment cause an issue? So if it's, they need to start at the application, and this is what we do internally. Right. We take everything as a span from every web ser service, yeah. and we convert that into logs, and that's how we troubleshoot. So that is the feature we've launched now with application signals, bringing it to, together with the service that many of our customers use called X-Ray, and the latest one where you can actually go from those spans, that was the demo in the innovation talk that David showed. Yeah. So we've covered a lot of ground and kind of the history of AWS and reInvent is all about this, this fire hose, this funnel of announcements. So we, you touched on a few. Um, 
let's do the recap. Let's kind of end this thing a little bit on the recap. Biggest announcements that you're in your in your business. What are you most excited about? What do you kind of want all the viewers out there to take away from this conversation as your sort of big moments from this year's reInvent? Yep. So the biggest things for me, some of the launches I already talked about, the investigations assistant, please kick the tires on it. The other thing I would say is fault injection service. Resiliency is so important. Think about Prime Day. I can't think of anything more that needs more high availability than sure. Prime Day. So we from AWS help retail run over 700 experiments on fault injection service. Yeah. So I would encourage viewers to give that a try because re resiliency is as critical as observability. For example, we've launched Database Insights and CloudWatch. We've launched, oh, here's a big theme that I'm super excited about, zero ETL. Remember I said customers don't right. want to move their data around? Um, so we have zero ETL between CloudWatch and Open Search Service. And we've also extended that to Security Lake and Open Search Service. Okay. So you can run analytics. Hmm. Open Search has very rich analytics, and you can run that no matter where your logs reside, whether it's in security use cases or in CloudWatch. It just works seamlessly. Containers. Many of our customers use uh, uh, run their applications on containers. So we've launched uh, enhanced container insights for EKS last year, and this year we launched it for ECS as yeah. well. Um, we have two new um, preventative policies to help you prevent drift once you set your configuration. We've had um, enhanced node management capability in Systems Manager. I'm just like, as you can tell, I love this <laughs> stuff. So we have so many launches. Appreciate all of the children, as we like to she say. She does. But she no favorites, right? You don't want to upset no, I have anybody. No favorites. Any of your product I love them all. leaders. You want them to know you love them all. I right? love them all. You love them yeah. all and all those customers, clearly, including Amazon as customer zero. Appreciate it so much, you spending the time here with us at reInvent. I'm sure it's very busy. If your feet hurt a little bit like mine do from all the steps you're getting in. Love the steps, though, but wear oh, comfy yeah. shoes. Yeah, you wear comfy, but Less they're, they're still one. stylish. Y'all can't see them, but I promise <laughs> you they are. And for everyone out there, I want to thank you so much for joining us here. The 6.5 is on the road at AWS reInvent 2024 in Las Vegas. Covered a ton of ground. Subscribe, join us for all of our other content and coverage here from Pat and I and from the whole 6.5 team. It's been a busy week, but we got to go for now. So we'll see you all later.